What's going on people, Mike C-Town here with another episode of Out of My Element, where you guys get to pick the albums that I review. And today is a special one, guys. Um, yeah, so the winner of this most recent poll is Charles Mingus, The Black Saint and the Sinner Lady. And what is so special about this, this is the first jazz album that has won this poll. And I've said before, jazz, is like the only genre that I really don't know much about at all. I've listened to a few people here and there. I have a couple of records, but not many. And you know, a lot of different music was played in my house when I was growing up, but believe it or not, from what I remember, jazz isn't really one of them. Um, there was a bit of Ramsey Lewis trio here and there, some, uh, some Miles Davis, of course, but that's kind of it. Um, so I've been really curious about jazz for a really long time, but it's one of those genres where it's kind of daunting and a little bit intimidating to try to figure out where to start. And I know a couple of homies out there, y'all know who I'm talking about, have tried to throw out some suggestions, but I don't know, I just never, never got around to it. Plus I would pick an artist and I would go through a couple other albums and you know, some of them I would think were really cool and then I'd hear like three more albums that I didn't really like at all. So the genre as a whole just never really sucked me into it. When I started this series, jazz was actually um, one of the things that I really had in mind as far as delving into, and I'd mentioned a ton of times that I didn't know much about jazz, so it's kind of crazy that it took this long for you guys to actually vote a jazz album to the top. But we are fucking here, and I'm stoked. Um, now, while I'm not super familiar with jazz, I am familiar with Charles Mingus. I know that's kind of disappointing for some of you guys, but um, yeah, I, I, I'd seen that documentary on him that came out a while ago and I found him to be just a fascinating character and I always get hyped on that Zach Taylor Roca line on the Run the Jewels album where he says um, I'm Charlie Mingus dumping through the ceiling master peeing on these lost Europeans thieving if you watch that documentary that line will make a lot more sense to you um, but yeah this album the Black Saint and the Sinner Lady this is recorded and released in 1963 and it's heralded as one of Mingus's uh, best works and I'd heard bits and pieces of it because of the documentary But I'd never actually sat down and listened to the entire thing before until now now I'm totally new um, when it comes to talking about this genre of music, so I'm not quite sure how this video is gonna go um, You know not to sound pretentious or anything, but it's very rare that I'm called to talk about a genre of music that I'm really just not comfortable with at all you know, but fuck it. Um, so yeah, so this album, it's broken into four tracks, but divided into different movements the way a ballet is, which he did intentionally, which I think is really fucking dope. But uh, from the moment this started, I was really sucked in. I like the tension that builds at the beginning of the first track. It really sounds like you're on a trip somewhere. Like you can almost visualize like being on a boat or something, like rough waters, you know, then the calm. Like that's what I feel when I listen to this as it moves into this frantic moment with the drums kind of doing their own thing. Then it kind of levels out. Then towards the end of this track, it's interesting how there's essentially so much going on at the same time, but instead of just chaos, it comes across as this beautiful arrangement that really takes you into your head, man. And, and at one point around the five and a half minute mark, it's almost like there are multiple solos happening at the same time. And it's really, it's really a cool feeling. The second track begins with this piano that sounds really sad and sultry at the same time once the horns weave their way in. Then around the, the three and a half minute mark, it just starts to get crazy. At this moment, it sounds like the horns are all doing their own thing as the drums start to get more and more anxious. And the composition here gets more and more exciting before there's a slight quiet moment before everything comes back together onto the same kind of mellow-ish beat. It's such a cool, cool track. The third track is really cool, the way it comes in again with these sad piano sounds. Then the horns kind of come in without warning, then they go away again, then they give more way to the piano. And once the horns come back, it's this, it's this really beautiful sound here, but it totally threw me off when the flamenco guitar 
came in, um, which was played beautifully and skillfully. It just wasn't something that I was expecting on an album like this, but it actually worked out beautifully to the point where I actually wanted it to stay a lot longer than it did. But at the same time, I also get that it felt like this sort of transition to the next part of the track, which was just really, really well done. The fourth and last track is actually a really cool one because it kind of plays with ideas that were done on the previous tracks. And I like that the flamenco guitar makes another appearance on this song, but this time it's stretched out a little bit more. But around four minutes into the track, it just gets ape shit. And I don't know, man, this might be my favorite part of the entire album. There's a whole lot of shit going on, it's spastic, it's frantic, it's all over the place. Then it kind of breaks into this quiet piano part for a moment that's once again very sad, very somber. Then this flute comes in that sounds like something that that Comus would have done on first utterance and it's just beautiful man. Uh, throughout the 20 minute track they go all over the place giving you so many different ideas, so many so many things coming in and out. It's like a roller coaster of emotions and um, I haven't read too much about this album so I'm not positive about the details concerning the story that they were maybe trying to tell here. Um, I read that it's about people who are mistreated in their country and the whole background surrounding that, but I don't really know much more than that. I need to look into it. At any rate, it certainly feels like this could be the soundtrack to a movie with no dialogue, you know? Uh, if you got the right actors, I feel like you could easily tell exactly what emotion they were trying to convey with the sounds coming from this album. And I'm definitely gonna be checking out some more of this stuff, man, because I just love it. But yeah, this was my first traditional jazz review, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Reading about how Charles Mingus used 11 different musicians who all played different but really important roles into this album, it's really, really interesting. This was something pretty rare during the time that this came out, and the fact that instead of just leaving it the way it was, which would probably still be just awesome to listen to, uh, he actually went back and applied a lot of overdubbing to the tracks, which is another thing that was unheard of at the time of this album's recording. And the whole idea that the liner notes were written maybe by someone that could have been going through a manic episode at the time, uh, it's something that also comes through in the music if you kind of have that information before consuming the album. Uh, I find the fact that there were also sections written by Mingus's a psychologist explaining, you know, kind of where his head may have been when he was composing these songs. The whole lore of this album is just as interesting as the music itself to me. But uh, overall, I really enjoyed this album. This is something that I would definitely return to. And I, I kind of have more of an understanding as to why metal dudes love this kind of shit. I have an understanding of why a lot of avant-garde experimental noise artists might really like this kind of thing because it's so free and it's kind of limitless, you know, and it's kind of taking the whole idea of music and its structure and it's flipping it on its head or it's totally saying fuck it all together, you know? But uh, yeah, I think, however, I like jazz with vocals a little bit more. Like the Amirtha Kadambi and uh, Elder Zones album that came out this year, I think that's amazing. That Keelan Phil Corin album, uh, African Skies that came out a while ago, that shit is just amazing. Um, I'm still getting acclimated and familiar with this type of music and I've, I've listened to a few. Uh, I won't say which ones because I don't want to spoil it in the event that you guys do vote for them in the future. But, um, but I'll say I had a feeling that a jazz album would eventually win and I couldn't be happier with the one that did. So thank you guys for voting this up. Um, I'm really happy with this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my jazz virginal ass uh, talking about this in the most unconventional and babbling way possible. But um, yeah, I don't know. The, uh, the new poll for the next video is in the description section down there. Let's do it, vote on it, get on it, and if you wanna be someone that can actually add choices to the poll, become a patron, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month. All right? 
So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as usual. Thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. And if this is uploaded on Christmas, which I plan, bah fucking humbug. Peace out, boy.